So if you're thinking at all about updating your bathroom in the future, this is going to be a very handy video. I've got all kinds of useful information about your cabinet and countertop choices that I'm also going to walk you through on how I saved over $2,600 on this particular combination right here. So let's start off talking countertops. Now I chose a nice quartz here and I have a handy tip on how I saved over $700 on this quartz countertop. But let's first talk about some of the cheaper options. The cheapest thing you can do for countertops is head down to the Home Depot or Lowe's and grab yourself a laminate countertop for like $98, six foot chunk. You'll have to cut it to size. Then you could just silicone the back or do a tile backsplash. Another option that you could pick up from one of the big box stores is these new wood um, countertops that they have. You can get those for about 250 bucks. And then you could cut that down and fit it to size. If you have kids, Neither the laminate or the wood are going to be a very great option just because the kids are going to get water all over the place and destroy stuff. Now from the box doors, you can also get like a one piece with the sink built in marble granite type countertops in various sizes and shapes. And those range from anywhere from like four to six, seven hundred dollars. The problem with that is a lot of the times if you're trying to go to an existing cabinet or you want to put in some new built in cabinets, those countertops are not really designed to be tight to a wall. They're always designed to be kind of more of a standalone centered unit. So keep that in mind if you're looking for that. And then if you kind of look into the reviews and what people say about those countertops, they're not really that highly regarded. So in my case, I ended up going with a quartz countertop. So quartz is just like a man-made marble type stone where they take the quartzite rock and then they mix it with some resin and some particles to make it look like different types of things. It's a very durable, very nice looking. I ended up going with this just because if you're gonna take the time and the money to redo something, this is really going to set you apart from just slapping back some laminate that was already there or some kind of an ill-fitting piece. Like when, when I go to sell this house and then people are checking out the house, a nice quartz countertop, that's going to add to the value. If I were to just kind of, even if I did redo the bathroom and then slap a laminate countertop in here, that's not doing anything for the value. If anything, it's just kind of a push at the best case scenario. So what I ended up doing to save over $700 with this quartz countertop is I built my own template out of wood. I located where the sink was going to be, the contour of the back and side wall, along with the dimensions here. Also gave dimensions for the splash that I wanted so that it could fit underneath this mirror frame. So I took my template along with my sink down to the countertop shop. Now a lot of these shops are gonna have a remnant section with, which is just leftover pieces that didn't get used up on bigger jobs. So I took the template dimensions, sorted through the remnants, found a nice piece here, put my name on it, and then the countertop shop built me the piece. I go ahead and picked it up in my truck. Now this quartz is very durable. You can pack it flat. So I just put a blanket down the back of my truck, flipped it up on the face here and just packed it back that way. And then me and my wife carried this upstairs and then just flipped it into place. Now I needed to cut out the style on this cabinet here. So there could be a little bit of woodworking involved there. I just used my oscillating tool for that. And to install these countertops, it's basically just put some silicone on the top of the cabinet to glue this thing into place some silicone and I used a couple clamps to glue the, uh, the back and side splash into place. And then you wanna just put some white silicone on the seam just to seal that all up so no water is gonna get behind there and damage the cabinets. So just to summarize here, this would have been $1,500 to get a company in here to do the templating and install it. I saved 700 bucks. I paid $800 as a DIY approach here, and that involved just templating and doing the installation myself. So let's talk about the cabinets. I was able to save over $1,900 getting these cabinets refinished, and I have a handy tip to save money on the refinishing. But first, let's talk about some of the other options that you have for cabinets. You can go ahead and you can buy new boxes and doors at the Home Depot. For something this size, you're gonna be looking at about seven to 800 bucks for new cabinets. You could go ahead and get one of those complete units with countertop that's gonna be kind of a standalone type unit. And those are gonna range from about 600 all the way up to kind of 1500 in that kind of a ballpark for something of this size. 
What I ended up opting for now, if you wanted to go to a cabinet shop, I got a quote on this type of a layout here from the shop that I used to work for. And that was going to be $2,400 for pretty much what you see here. Obviously the insides of the cabinets are going to be brand new. So that would be nicer. What I ended up doing is just refinishing the old cabinets that I have and a handy way to save some money on that. So to get these cabinets refinished here, that was $500. It would have been a thousand dollars to have the company come on site, finish it on site, take the doors back, install everything that you see here. So I saved myself 500 bucks by doing a similar process to what I did with the countertop. So I ended up taking off all the components myself, this little drawer face, the drawer faces up here and the doors, the doors just unclip. So there's nothing to that. And then I built myself a gable out of MDF. I built this kick along the bottom just out of some pine material that I picked up from the Home Depot and also just a little filler strip here out of the MDF. I took all those parts to the refinishing shop. Let's talk quickly about whether or not you should get a pro to do it or do you want to venture into painting your own cabinets. I've done both and I would definitely recommend getting a professional. For something like this here, you're going to spend probably anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks on paint and primer and brushes. And then you might spend another 20, 30 hours watching YouTube videos about how to get a nice finish here. And then you're never gonna get nearly as nice of a finish as a professional did. So I ended up getting this stuff professionally refinished by the Constanta Group, a guy named Constantine. I highly recommend him. He's based in the Vancouver area. I will put his contact info in the description. I'll also put his Instagram handle in there. He's got all kinds of cool videos of them doing all kinds of work all over the place. It's a pretty cool setup that they can do to refinish this stuff in your home with plastic everywhere and ventilation. So I'll put that in the description. So all in all, brass taxes here. It was $500 to get the cabinets refinished, 800 bucks for this quartz countertop, $200 for the sink. So $1,500 all in. For a beautiful product that is probably going to cost you four to five thousand dollars if you were to get somebody to professionally do this in your home and if you want to see how to perfectly fit these cabinet gables along with the dimensions you would need to make that in order to get all of this happening check out this video right over here and if you want to stick around to the channel and subscribe I'm going to have some future videos on the bathroom over about exactly how to make the template for your countertop. And I'll also go over on how to build the parts and install them if you'd like to save some cash on getting your cabinets refinished. Thanks for watching.